Welcome to a special segment of Neo Cash Radio, where we review the top three crypto hardware wallets. In the studio today, it's JJ and Pedro. What hardware wallets are we going to review today, Pedro? So we have here is we have the uh, Keep Key, the Ledger Nano S, and the Trezor wallet. Uh, we'll be going over the setup, uh, their use, as well as the coins and wallets that they support. Let's start by discussing how crypto wallets work and why they should be used. The private keys to any cryptocurrency are used to both generate the wallet address as well as authorize the transfer of coins. Anyone with the private keys can spend from that wallet, and this is why it is critical to keep those private keys offline and secure for any wallet with significant funds. While mobile devices are great for convenience, think of them as your physical traditional wallet that contains cash. It should only have amounts you can live with losing. Securing your private keys can be done with using a hardware wallet that keeps your private keys offline in the secure area of the device. These private keys can never leave the device, so in order to spend funds, an unsigned transaction sent to the device where you have to physically press a button that will allow the device to sign the transaction with the private key. The signed transaction can then be broadcast without fear the private keys were ever exposed. Hardware wallets are backed up with a 12 or 24 word passphrase. Multiple copies of these backup phrases should be secured in multiple locations. The passphrase should never be photographed, typed into any document, or photocopied. Additionally, with these hardware wallets, you compare the address that the funds are being sent to with the address that will be displayed on the device. This protects you in case someone compromised the Java code or app that is being used for the wallet functions on your computer. So let's get started with the Keep Key. The Keep Key comes with a USB to USB mini cable, backup card, quick start guide, and a warranty card. To get started, launch the Chrome browser and then navigate to keepkey.com slash support slash get dash started. We've launched the Keep Key application, and now we're going to initiate uh, a new Keep Key wallet. Okay, so it's going to ask us to label this again. Anything you want. Okay, so it's going to scramble the numbers on on the Keep Key device screen, and we're going to match that up with the pin that we want to use. So we're going to select one, two, three, four. We're going to confirm that. Okay, so this is where the big dis- display of the Keep Key makes things easy. It's displaying uh, all 12 backup words on the screen at once. So instead of having to cycle through them, it's going to display them all. And we're going to note these down. Okay, so I, I've done that and I've visually uh, double checked it. And I'm going to click select and OK. So now it's actually generating the deterministic wallet. And then it'll give us our accounts. So by default, it creates a wallet address for Bitcoin SegWit. And what we want to do is we want to add a account for Bitcoin Cash. So we're going to go to the lower right. And we're going to select Bitcoin Cash as the type of coin. And we'll give it a name. All right, so there's our Bitcoin Cash. So if I want to send funds there, we would select uh, Receive Bitcoin Cash. Now you notice it'll it'll display that address and the QR code both on the computer screen and on the KeepKey device. So it's very important when sending um, when sending funds and receiving funds to compare the addresses that they match. So usually if you, you know, just confirm the first few digits and the last few digits, and if they're all the same, then, you know, you have the same address. Well, let's make an Ether address, Pedro. So now we go down and and select Ethereum, give it the account a name. So now all these different coins are tied to the same deterministic wallet type for all of these, which means if you just wipe the device and recreate it and restore your seed, you'll get all your wallets back. So let's go on ahead and send the keep key uh, some ETH. 
boom, there it is. Now that we've received some Ethereum, we can uh, we can select transactions and it'll actually uh, show you some information, um, the transaction ID. Clicking details will take you to either scan.io. So now that we have some uh, Ether in our Keep Key wallet, let's go on ahead and, and show how to send. So here we're going to paste the NeoCash Ethereum donation address. So now when sending, it's going to actually challenge you for your PIN. So just like when we unlocked it before, it scrambles the numbers on the Keep Key device. It needs me to confirm the transaction by physically pressing a button, and that prevents people from hacking code to, um, you know, give an OK without a, a physical connection. So it's telling me here how much I want to send and where I want to send it to. So this, again, is where you can compare the address that you have on the computer to the address that's being displayed on the keep key, and they need to match. If they don't match, then your, your computer has been compromised. So I'm going to push and hold this button. Okay, so now it prompts me again. Are you sure, you know, do you want to send this transaction? So the previous screen showed the amount and now it's uh, sending the fee. It's, it's displaying the fee. I push and hold. And that transaction has now been broadcast. KeepKey supports Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, Dash, and Doge. There is beta support for ERC-20 Ethereum tokens. Next up is the Ledger Nano S wallet. The package includes the Ledger Nano S, a USB to micro USB cable, a strap lanyard key ring, recovery sheet, and a couple of sheets with information on how to get started and one about how there's no anti-tampering stickers due to the fact that the device checks in with Ledger when initializing to ensure its integrity. Before generating a new wallet for the Ledger device, I want to demonstrate this one feature of the Ledger. So I'm gonna enter in the pin number wrong. So it's telling us now that I have two remaining attempts. I have three total. So I, I burned one. I have one remaining attempt. So again, I'm going to enter the wrong pin number. Invalid. Your device has been reset. So this device is now like it was when it got shipped from the factory. The private keys have been wiped out. In case somebody steals this device, when, if they try to enter the pin three times wrong, they, the device is wiped and it's no good to them. You have the backup phrase somewhere safe, so you can restore that to another device. So let's go on ahead and initialize the, the ledger. I'm going to connect it. We're on the ledger website, and we're going to load the ledger manager. So Ledger Manager is a Google Chrome app. And we're going to launch that. It's telling us that uh, this device has to be uh, configured as a new. So I'm going to select the check mark with that button. So now we're going to choose the pin. I'm going to press both buttons down. And I'm going to enter in a pin code. So we're going to do one, two, three, four for this demo. OK, so now it wants me to confirm my pin. So now it's going to cycle through 24 words or, that I'm going to write down. So I'm going to select both buttons. And it's going to show me the first word and then an arrow for me to cycle through all 24 words. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down on their backup passphrase. The ledger is going to actually have us enter in all those 24 words um, once we're done backing them up. With the previous firmware, they uh, I, I believe it was three or four of those 24 they would pick, but now it's all 24. So I'm going to go on ahead and write down this backup. So I've got on ahead and written down all 24 words. If you want to double check before moving on to the next step, you can you know cycle back through any one of them. It tells you the word number and the word. So once we're done, okay. So now it wants me to confirm all 24 of those again. So double press, and now it wants me to confirm word number one. Word number one was uphold, so I'm going to scroll until I see the word uphold. So once I find that word for confirm word number one, I'm going to press both buttons. So now it wants me to confirm word number two, and I'm going to repeat this step another 23 times. Once I enter them all in, it's now going to process and tell me that device is ready. Device is now ready for use. Now, there, with the Ledger app, you actually have to put a version of uh, their wallet app on the device itself. 
and the ledger manager is what you use to do that. So right now it's it's got no um, no wallets. So we're gonna select uh, so we can select Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum. The latest uh, firmware update allows for there to be more wallets on this device before it runs out of memory because it's using common libraries between wallets like say Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Dash use a lot of similar code. Uh, so they were able to make it so you can fit more on here. And JJ, let's select uh, Bitcoin right at the top and hit the down arrow. It's going to ask me on the device, do I want to install apps? I only need to confirm this one time per session. So now it's installing Bitcoin. And you can now see on the device it's processing. And now you see a B for Bitcoin. Uh, so if we wanted to do others, we would just go on and, and load the rest. There are, are some settings that you can you can do on the device. You can have it so that when you uh, plug it in, it doesn't default the pin number to five. It randomizes each one. So it, it just puts more randomization. You can pick more than four characters for a pin, up to eight. Uh, you know, change the display. And, um, and that's the setup of the Ledger Nano S. So a bit tedious with having to re-enter those 24 words but i'm glad that it forces you to do that because if you enter those 24 words and and they're correct then you know that your backup phrase is correct so let's go on ahead to the website and then to the uh, apps so what we're going to do is 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 something similar we're going to go on ahead and receive some ether and and send some ether so we're going to select the ledger wallet ethereum now one thing to note about um the Ledger and uh, Ethereum is you can use their Chrome app or you can use my Ether wallet. So we're going to demo uh, both. So we're going to do a receive with the Ledger wallet that's on the Chrome web store. And then we'll do a send uh, using my Ether wallet. So now it, when, when we go into the Chrome app, it's going to ask us to connect the Ledger and then it's going to prompt for the, the pin number. So that's one, two, three, four. You cycle up and down with the two buttons, and then to make a button press, you select both of them together. And then when we're done, we, we, can, so we can press both to enter in our pin. So with the ledger, we need to now select on the actual device itself what coin we want to interact with. So I'm gonna go over and select Ethereum. Okay, so now the ledger app wants to know do we want Ethereum Classic or Ethereum? So we're gonna pick Ethereum and remember this choice, so now we're going to go on ahead and go to the down arrow so we can receive some funds. Okay, so there's our address. Boom. And now we have some Ethereum in this address. Now to go on ahead and spend, it would be to select the up arrow. And, and we can then uh, enter the amount. We can click on the camera button at the bottom. It would use your laptop's camera or your desktop's webcam. But we actually want to show how to uh, send using my Ether wallet. So for the Trezor and the Ledger, um, they can interface with Ethereum and ERC20 Ethereum tokens using myetherwallet.com. Um, so the way we use that is we go to the Send Ether up above. And it's then going to ask how we want to access the wallet and what type of wallet we have. So we're going to select the Ledger wallet. All right, so now I'm going to connect the Ledger wallet. And I'm going to enter in the pin code again. Now, in order to access it, we again have to go to the Ethereum app on the Ledger device itself. But we actually need to make a change here. Um, by default, the app has browser support set to off because it's using it. Uh, it's using the Ledger's uh, Chrome app. But if we want to use my Ether wallet, we have to go into settings for the Ethereum wallet, and we have to put browser support on yes. And now we can access it. So we're going to select the top address, and you can see that we have the balance uh, of what we sent a few minutes ago. So then we're going to click on unlock the wallet. And now we're in to our address. So on the account address on the right, that's the Ethereum address. If you had any tokens associated to this address, you can um, view it here as well. Um, down below, there's token balances. 
Uh, so to send, we're going to put in uh, the Neocache donation address. It's a and fine address. It's a fine address. So um, we're going to send the entire balance, 50 cents worth. And then we're going to generate a transaction. So now on the ledger device, it's going to show the amount and the address. Um, because it can't fit the entire address, it's going to scroll that address. So you should confirm that this is the address that you want to send it to. And if you agree, you're gonna, I'm going to click on this button here with the check mark. And you can see now um, it's the raw transaction on the left is what it sent to the ledger. The ledger then signed that with the private key and the signed transaction that needs to be broadcast for this uh, transaction to go through is what's on the right. So now we're going to click on the send transaction and it's going to be broadcast uh, to the Ethereum network. Here is the last place you have on whether to abort or not. Um, so we're going to say yes. And the transaction's gone through. And with my Ether wallet, you can view the transaction status. So the uh, other function you can have with, with a ledger is you can set up a, f uh, a fake wallet or a fake account. Well, not a fake account, but you can set up a secondary account where with two different PIN codes, it'll unlock one or the other. And that's in case, um, you know, somebody tried to force you to unlock the, the ledger, you can unlock a wallet that had a much smaller amount than, than your backup. The Ledger Nano S supports more currencies than the Keep Key. It also supports all ERC-20 Ethereum tokens. The Ledger Nano S has their own Chrome wallet apps for Ripple, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, with the latter two using the Bitcoin Chrome app, as well as the ability to use online wallets like MyEther Wallet. Finally, we have the Trezor Wallet. The package contains the Trezor device, a USB to mini USB cable, two recovery sheet booklets, a lanyard, a user manual, and four stickers. For interfacing with uh, the Trezor Wallet, we go to trezor.io slash start. And uh, here you can come in and select the Trezor 1, which is what we have. Okay, so now we need to install what's called the, the Trezor Bridge. That's going to allow us to uh, interact with uh, the device. Okay, so here we have the option um, to either create a new wallet or recover a wallet. So we're going to select uh, Create a Wallet. And there's a few steps here we need to do in order to initialize this wallet. So the first, we have to create a backup. So we're going to confirm we understand that and continue. So now the Trezor is going to display on the device here, one through 24, and we're going to cycle these words. We need to note them down. So we would use Trezor backup card, and we're just going to cycle through these and write the word down. So I've gone through and I've written down all 24 words, cycling them to the end. And then it's going to actually ask to cycle through all these words one more time and compare them to what I've written down. Okay, so now that we've written down the 24 word seed phrase, we've also now uh, reviewed that again. And now we're going to click continue and continue. So we should name the device. We can, you know, Trezor one, you know, backup one. It wants us to confirm. So we press that button and continue. Now we need to enter in our pin. So I'm going to confirm that that's what we want to do. And it's going to give us the scrambled uh, numbers key. And we're going to type that into the computer. So we're going to select one, two, three, four as the pin for this demo. And enter. It's going to ask us to re enter it again. And you can see so that now we've confirmed that. So continue. And that's it. This Trezor device is now ready for use. Okay, so now we're going to receive some Bitcoin Cash. We're going to show the full address. And you'll see that it's asking to check the address on the ledger. So it's going to display the receive address on your ledger that's up on the screen. And you want to make sure these two match. Again, in case, you know, if your computer was compromised and somebody made it so that it displayed something different on the screen. This is where you catch it. So I'm going to confirm that. Now that I've confirmed it, then it'll display uh, the Bitcoin Cash uh, account address. 
So using the Trezor with uh, My Ether Wallet is similar to the ledger. You're going to go to myetherwallet.com, ensure that that's the address. Go to the tab Send Ether and Tokens, and then select Trezor and connect Trezor. So now we're going to enter one, two, three, four again by matching up the numbers on the Trezor that are scrambled every time. Now we can select uh, an ETH address and unlock our wallet. And now we're in an ETH address. And the Bitcoin Cash is on its way. So while we're waiting for that to confirm, we can go to the uh, Transactions tab on the, on the upper left. And there we go. There is our incoming transaction if we want to uh, send a transaction. So let's find the Neocash Bitcoin Cash donation address. Well, it looks like we run into a slight problem here. The treasure treasure does not support the new Bitcoin Cash address format. So, okay, Pedro. So we found another donation instead. Yes, we're going to donate uh, fifty cents to the um, Ross Albrick. Tree Ross Albrick. There we go. Fifty cents. Send. What happens now, Pedro? So now it wants us to confirm the transaction on on the device. Um, so again. Um, it's telling us how much how much to send and the receive address to send to and now you, again you'll get a another screen to confirm uh, that you really want to send this bitcoin cash to to that address so double confirmation a double confirmation Trezor supports Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin, Dash, Zcash, NEM, as well as ERC20 Ethereum tokens. In addition to the native Trezor wallet, other wallets are also supported. There is a Trezor manager for Android that allows you to use the Trezor device on a USB on-the-go cable. When purchasing any of these hardware wallets, it is recommended you do so from either the manufacturer or a reputable reseller like Amazon. Someone who purchased a Nano Ledger S from eBay lost funds because the scammer generated a key and then made the backup card look like a scratch off to reveal the, a unique private key. All these hardware wallets should be initialized and a new seed generated. Some final thoughts. Any one of these wallets will secure the private keys to the coins they support and are much more secure than keeping private keys on computers and mobile devices. If the hardware wallet is lost or stolen, they can be restored using the backup phrase. So let's start with the keep key. What I liked about the keep key was it has a big display, which is the easiest to read among all three. It also has a, its software is open source. What I didn't like about it is it supports the fewest coins. Some coins it supports like ERC20 tokens only with a beta wallet, and it does not support integration with myetherwallet.com. I also didn't like that it's a bit large to always have on your person compared to the ledger or treasure. Lastly, it uses a 12-word backup for phrase versus 24-word phrase for ledger or treasure, and you know it could be argued that 20, 12 is, is plenty. Um, so this isn't really uh, a ding. It, I, it was just one area that it was slightly below the others. As far as the ledger Nano S, what I like about this is it's small, it's rugged, and it's protected with a metal cover. It supports all the major coins plus ERC20 tokens via my Ether wallet. What I didn't like about the ledger was it has the smallest display among the three. However, it, you know, it is usable and it's not open source. Uh, so this is a, a criticism in the industry of ledger. However, they have been really good with, with their code. As far as the treasure, what I liked about the treasure is it's got a good balance in display size. It's in between the size of the keep key and the ledger, um, but it's also small and portable. It supports all the major coins plus ERC20 tokens via myetherwallet.com, and its software is open source. The only thing I didn't like about the Trezor um, was it doesn't seem quite as durable as the, as the ledger. Um, however, um, it's perfectly fine for you know keeping off site. I've I've had the ledger in my um, on my keychain for 
probably two years now and it's it's still fine so it, it, it does live up so my personal favorite of the three is the ledger nano s it's small rugged and supports all the major currencies i also really like the trezor as it's small and supports the major currency and has a, um, a really good wallet a really good user interface so if you have significant crypto holdings consider storing them on multiple not only multiple hardware wallets but multiple brands of hardware wallets so i now store my crypto uh, assets on both the trezor and the ledger well thanks for that pedro and we hope to have more reviews of different crypto products including wallets if there's something you want to see please send us an email you can send an email to pedro at pedro at neocashmedia.com mm-hmm.